pressed for a win with key losses to Sanzar and even the Knights in the process. They're going to need to drum up and string along more wins here if they want to cement a place in the knockouts. Boaz Mariano officially signing off. Pero bago yan, ladies and gents. Alam nyo ba, that ball at TV has taken over Google Play. Please do download us there. www.bola.tv is the place to go additionally. I turn the floor over now to Stan and Coach. What's the latest, you guys? Balita, anyo naman kami. Thank you very much, Boaz Mariano, for setting us up here at the Villar Coliseum in Las Piñas. It's the third game of our quadruple header this Sunday afternoon. This one featuring the San Beda Red Lions matcha team and the FEU Tamaraus. Magandang hapon po. My name is Stan C. alongside Coach Mark Dandan. And as Boaz alluded to earlier, one streak will have to end here. The San Beda Red Lions are looking up at the rest of their group. Meanwhile, the FU Tamaraus are sitting comfortably on top of the Group A standings with an unblemished record. Coach Mark, let's start with FEU here. What have you liked about their performance so far? So one thing about FEU is their depth. They're missing LJ Gonzalez due to injury, but a couple of guys have stepped up, namely Patrick Sleet, Cholo Anunevo, and Cyrus Torres, who has two consecutive best players of the games. And how about the San Beda Red Lions? This is a team that you were, a, a lot of people were expecting would be performing well in advance of NCAA Season 99, but this is a very different lineup that we're seeing, and could that be a factor into their record right now? It could be, but they have that lack of depth in, in, uh, inside the paint. Rebounding has been a challenge for them. Last game, they were out-rebounded by the Sanzar Fire Tigers, 61 to 38. Three guys from Sanzar actually out-rebounded the whole San Beda lineup, and it's very concerning for Coach Andre Santos and how he will adjust on the fly. This being a back-to-back -back game, as you see the lineup for the FU Tamaraus. As I said earlier, no LJ Gonzalez for the Tamaraus, but Cyrus Torres has been taking the reins for the Tamaraus, leading them in scoring the past two games. And with the likes of Cholo Anunuevo and Patrick Sleet contributing, this has been a good tournament so far for the FEU Tamaraus. It should be quite uh, quite promising to see what the rest of the FEU Tamaraus lineup would look like uh, for the upcoming UAAP Season 86. Meanwhile, the San Beda Red Lions, a lot of these players are actually serving their residency, some of them having transferred from other schools. In fact, Brian Sahonia, you're seeing his name in the lineup, he just played for the FEU Tamaraus in the previous UAAP season. And that he did, and they're also missing one guy, namely Joe Celso, who also played for FEU last season. We'll elaborate on that in a bit. First, let's turn it over to our game announcer, Cho Pangilinan. Eastern University Tamaraus going up against the San Beda Red Lions. Let's meet both teams, starting with the San Beda Red Lions. Number one, Richie Kalimag. Number three, Albert Lopez. Number seven, Bismarck Lina. Number 9, Brian Sahonia. Number 10, Alex Teruel. Number 13, R.C. Kalimag. Number 15, Zed Etwelye. Number 16, Colin Dimakulangan. Number 17, Edmund Mundas. Number 20, Jermaine Lexiones. Number 22, Zyros Mina. Number 23, Kevin Peregrina. Number 24, Menard Songkuya. Number 46, Ron Talentino. And number 77, Alj Alioso. Now for the FEU Tamaraus. Number four, James Tempra. Number eight, Cholo Anonuevo. Number 10, Patrick Sleep. Number 12, Renzo Competente. Number 15, Aaron Baguno. Number 18, Roy Salforque. Number 20, Cyrus Torres. Number 27, Miguel Ona. Number 28, Luke Felipe. Number 32, Leighton Buenaventura. Number 34, Muhammad Fati. And number 88, Jerbiak De Varas. Now that both teams have exchanged pleasantries, let's go back to the point we were making earlier about the San Beda Red Lions. Uh, we were mentioning earlier, Coach Mark, that some of these guys are actually serving their residency, meanwhile others are 
these are players that are still trying to get a hang of the system of Coach Yuri Escueta, who isn't uh, coaching in this tournament. Oh, it's you could say they're a mismatch of players. You have Colin Dimakolangan and uh, Lina coming in from the UV Fighting Barons program. You have two guys actually from FEU, but one guy's injured. As I said earlier, Joe Celso also played for FEU last season in the UAAP. And that's uh, something we'll keep an eye on throughout this matchup. Now, let's welcome the third member of our broadcast team, Enros Fernandez. Hi, everyone. I'm joined today by Denok Miranda of the FEU Tamaraus. Coach, today is the third day, and they say that third time's a charm. But for the FEU Tamaraus, it seems like the charm is the one after them. After two games, they remain undefeated. Coach, are we anticipating the same magnitude of performance from the Tamaraus as they face their third opponent today? Ah, uh, syempre yung pong third game na namin ngayon, so same pa rin yung gagawin namin. Kung ano yung kung sa kami magaling, kung sa kami malakas. Yun tutuloy pa rin namin yung uh, uh, yung system namin. All right, coach. Kahit secured tayo with two wins, we cannot deny that the opposite may happen. Coach, ano dapat ang laging isa-isip ng ating mga players? Ano man ang maging resulta ngayon? Uh, parati ko naman sinasabi sa players ko na kahit anong mangyari, basta at least bigay nila yung best effort nila. Uh, yung result, darating na lang naman yun. Eh. Alright, Coach, thank you so much for gracing the interview. Stan, Mark? Thank you very much, Enros Fernandez. What a debut in Asia Basket for our courtside reporter for this afternoon. We'll talk to her again in a bit. You're looking at Patrick Sleet right now, one of the leaders of the FU Tamaraus as they've got their undefeated record so far throughout uh, the Asia Basket Las Pinas Championship. Well, Patrick Sleet is one of the guys who has been playing very well, Stan, defensively, first and foremost. He's been locking down the best player of every, uh, their opponents and also contributing in double figures for each two games. Now, who else are you expecting to step up? Because this is uh, actually a lineup that is by committee now, right? Uh, as we turn it over to the San Beda Red Lions, uh, this is a team that uh, doesn't really have a set rotation based on their first two matchups. Well, you've seen a lot of playing time coming from Brian Sahonia and RC Kalimag, as well as Richie Kalimag, the younger brother of RC. But scoring-wise, hasn't been there for the Kalimag brothers. Richie scored 10 points last night. RC only scored 5 points. We haven't seen them play well together. And hopefully, we'll see these two future Red Lions play well this afternoon. It's time to meet the starting lineups for both teams. So let's send it back to our venue announcer, Cho Pangilina. Bola TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. Bola TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. Now. Now, the starters for the Sanbera Red Lions. Number 77, Aljay Alioso. Number 24, Menard Song Kuya. Number 9, Brian Sahonia. Number seven, Bismarck Lina. And number one, Richie Kalimag. Head coach, Andre Santos. Now, the starters for the FEU Tamaraus. 
Number four, James Tempra. Number 12, Renzo Competente. Number 18, Roy Salforque. Number 20, Cyrus Torres. And number 34, Mohamed Fati. Head coach is Denok Miranda. This is a familiar lineup we're seeing here for the FEU Tamaraos. No, not really a lot of changes for head coach Denok Miranda. Mo Fati, your man in the middle as always. He's joined by Competente, uh, Sleet, Torres, and I believe that's uh, Tempra in the uh, starting lineup. Meanwhile, the five on the floor for the San Beda Red Lions, you refer, uh, you alluded to the Kalimag brothers, Coach Mark. Only one of them, the younger Richie, is uh, starting here for Coach Andre Santos. Well, much of the same from San Beda. Only difference now is the younger Kalimag is indeed starting for the Red Lions this afternoon. Tip off right now, Tinanatin, who will get first blood in this matchup of an undefeated team in FEU? And the winless team in San Beda as Torres pulls up from long range. Medyo nilalamig pa. Single possession here for San Beda. Uh, for FEU. No, Torres is handling the ball more this season. They're looking for him to be, become more of a primary scorer, Stan, when it comes to the next UAP season. Sahonia going around that pick. Couldn't find that opening. Fast break opportunity para sa FEU. There's a foul on the floor, no free throws just yet. That one likely go, going to go against Alioso. Roy Salforque really likes to push the tempo when it comes to transition offense. Sporting a white headband today. He's been wearing black the past two games. Nakaka-affect ba yan? Like if you change colors of anything in your gear, does that actually change your mojo mo heading into a game? Well, if it's a headband, a headband is a headband. You know, wala namang difference yan. Kulay lang naman talaga. Baka kailangan lang maglaba. <laughs> Laundry day, no? Laundry day. I don't know about you, but for me, when it comes to performing, putting on different colors, medyo may meaning din yan, eh. Maybe it inspires a different type of mood. So, baka iba yung mindset nitong si Royce Alforque, who is the trigger man on this inbounds play. Maybe this is his scoring headband today, Stan. Looking for a breakout game. Why not? Nine on the shot clock here for Cyrus Torres. Ignoring that Fati pick. Torres still short. Lina cleaning it up. Torres settling for two early jumpers to start the ball game. They look for him to get going, maybe to the basket, see the ball swish in, as you see that miss. Kalima couldn't get that one to go, but San Beda has a second chance right here. Seven on the shot clock for the Red Lions. Good ball movement so far, but they're running out of time. That's a three, Alioso no good. Could have been another offensive rebound, but this time it's FEU running down their end of the floor. Mo Fati was calling for it inside. He has a mismatch, getting a double team though. Fati getting bailed out by the whistle, but that's a travel. No, this will be a challenge again for San Beda. The same way Sanz are uh, the Fire Tigers yesterday really dumped the ball down in the post with their world imports. Fati has a very big height difference against Bismarck Lina. So we'll see how the San Beda Bigs defend Mo Fati today. And it's very interesting that you point that out, Coach Mark, especially given that foreign student athletes are no longer allowed in the NCAA. It's been that way for the last handful of years. Meanwhile, for UAAP, it's still fair game. So you really see the dichotomy between both collegiate leagues right now as San Beda drains its first bucket of the game. Now, it's something they don't see literally every day now if you're an NCAA team. And you're talking about big guys, Bismarck Lina isn't really the tallest big man out there for San Beda. So it's a big challenge for him going in you know, for the rest of the tournament for all the teams that have world imports. Bismarck Lina is all of six foot five, which by world standards should only really be in the swingman range as Richie Kalimag drains that floater. A great floater from Richie Kalimag. I'm seeing a lot of scoring potential in this game. You know, he has that uh, Juan Gomez de Leano vibe to him. And that's a UP connection given that uh, the Kalimag brothers did spend time over in uh, Dileman. Nine seconds here on the shot clock for Tempra. Passing out of the double team to Mo Fati. Torres almost losing that one. Gets the nine. Brian Sahonia read his former teammate very well. That's what they call knowing the teammate. They practiced together for a good three years now. San Beda off to a hot start. They're up 7-0 and Coach Denok Miranda wants to talk it over. We'll be right back.
We're going to talk through this timeout as uh, Coach Denok Miranda and Coach Andre Santos go through what they have to finish in the first quarter. Meanwhile, here's a look at the rest of our schedule for today. Our quadruple header ends with a 7 p.m. matchup between Corsa Tires at 1-1 one and, one and the undefeated Ateneo Blue Eagles. It should, it should be a fun matchup later on tonight. Corsa, especially with Babacar Endong manning the paint, he should be a handful for Joe Obasa, Mason Amos, and Kai Balunga tonight. You can catch all of our games either on the Facebook and YouTube pages of Asia Basket or Phil Basket or on delayed telecast on Solar Sports or on Bola.tv, which is one of the newest ways to enjoy your sporting coverage. In fact, if you uh, scan the QR code that was on your screen moments ago, you actually have a chance to win some prizes, including some cash prizes courtesy of your favorite streamers on Bola.tv. You've actually been seeing them as part of our pre-game, halftime, and post-show coverage. So many thanks to one of our partners for the 2023 Asia Basket Las Piñas Championship presented to you by Bola.tv. Good F zipper action there from FEU going to this handoff. Early bailout on that ball screen, though. Left corner three. FEU still can't buy a bucket, and Fatih tips it to himself, but it into the hands of Lina. Sanbeta doing a better job blocking out today. Remember, they gave up 61 rebounds to Sanzar last night. Kalimag way off on that three-pointer. FEU feeling the pressure. They're still scoreless. That's another three for Torres. Hits the right of the rim into Fatih. Gets blocked down low. Left corner three this time. Still can't get it to go. Now, if he's settling too much for the outside shot, now, they have an advantage in Mo Fati that they only go on to him once in the post. Ano kailangan ang gawin ni Mo Fati to establish himself when he's already the biggest guy on the floor by a good eight inches? No, he has to find the spot better sa paint stand. Hindi siya masyado nakakasil na malalim. But he's seven foot two, so he needs to be nearer the basket. 10 seconds on the shot clock here for San Beda. Alioso almost losing control. Three seconds to Lina. Off the glass. Nice little push shot from Bismarck Lina. Just avoiding the challenge from the FEU players. Some 9 0 start for San Beda. FEU is still scoreless, mostly because they've been taking contested outside shots. And Coach Denok Miranda ready to bring in his substitutions for the starters just because he needs to change something up here as Tempra gets doubled in the post. And there's going to be a foul. James Tempra has forced the issue in the post the past two possessions to see the ball at the at TV assist of the game. Bismarck Lina with a nice push shot. Alioso with a nice look away pass too. It's got to be difficult to penetrate, especially when you've got big Mo Fati in your, in your lane, right? So to, to be able to nail a pass like that into Bismarck Lina with time about to run out, credit I, I, to Alioso. I would assume it's like passing over a Meralco post. <laughs> FEU finally putting a point on the board off that free throw. Now, FEU has really made the point of creating from the post. They've dumped the ball down to James Tempra. The last two possessions, he was looking for kickouts, but for some reason, he dribbled right into double teams twice. Tempra one for two on that last trip at the free throw line. We're at the halfway mark of the first quarter. Here's RC Kalima, the elder brother. Sahonia now. Trying to pass it down low. Tolentino back out to Sonkuya. And here's Sahonia. Former Tamarao puts it up into Tempra. FEU looking to run. Patrick Sleet into the paint. Nice no-look pass. Post shot here for Ona. No good. No, FEU has had their shots in the paint stand. Talagang minamalas lang sila to start the game. Still no field goals for FEU. They're 0 for 8 so far. And they're getting physical already. Probably some frustration on the part of the Tamaraos. Oh, it's very frustrating. We're not making any shots to start the game. Patrick Sleet. So one guy that can get going for the Tamaraos. You know, he's a very good downhill scorer, talking about him. But one thing he needs to work on is his outside shot. 14 on the shot clock here for San Beda, and they drain a quick jumper off that Brian Sahonia cut. So Brian Sahonia wasn't really known as a scorer when he was with FEU, more of a role player. They're showing now his former coaches what they're missing. And going back to Brian Sahonia, 
in the previous season, he was actually their second leading scorer. So it, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting uh, that he was one of the key cogs, but felt like he, his development as a player would probably take a better turn under the leadership of uh, Coach Yuri Escueta and Coach Andre Santos, who you're looking at right now. Yeah, and you're looking at FU, you know, you have Patrick Sleep, you have Cholo and Mevo, a couple guys who are playing the same position as Brian Sahonia. So there was going to become a log jam in that position. Maybe Brian Sahonia thought he'd be better off in another, uh, in another school. Cholo Año Nuevo drilling that first free throw and also makes the second one as we thank Frankie's New York Buffalo Wings, the official food sponsor of the 2023 Asia Basket Las Pinas Championship. We'd also like to thank Smart, the official internet provider of the 2023 Asia Basket Las Pinas Championship. Can't get anything done without good food and great internet. RC Kalima got on the baseline, tried to fade away. Offensive rebound, that's good for Tolentino, who draws the foul. Offensive rebound wasn't a word we heard a lot yesterday from San Beda. He absolutely dominated on the boards and see the replay. Ronre Tolentino not giving up on the play there. He might be a bit undersized playing this four spot, but Ronre Tolentino can take you off the dribble. He can hit the outside shot. So he's going to be a good piece for San Beda come NCAA Season 100. Ronre Tolentino transferred from the CEU Scorpions and he also played in AAC before that. So this is already his third university. Again, it's the quest to find the right place to develop your wares as a player, especially in the Philippine collegiate scene as Patrick Steve misses that drive. Fast break opportunity here for San Beda. Nice rejection from the Tamaraus. Scrappy for the loose ball. They're feeling the need for speed inside as Patrick Sleet draws that foul. Up and down basketball for both teams. Nobody really setting up. You know, when you see basketball like this, there's going to be a lot of turnovers. There's going to be a lot of bad shots. Quick timeout here for Coach Denok Miranda and the FEU Tamaraus. So if you're FEU, we'll get to that point in a bit. But first, let's take a quick break. Bola TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. Three minutes and 21 seconds remaining in our first quarter. This is our third game for our Sunday afternoon quadruple header at the Villar Coliseum. Patrick Sleet at the line here. Now the San Beda Red Lions regrouping after that last timeout. Coach Mark, what have you liked about San Beda so far that's led them to this eight-point early lead? So they're rebounding better. They're getting out on the break, getting more quality shots. I mean, it's night and day the difference between their interior play from yesterday. FEU getting another chance here off that offensive rebound. Had that fresh 14, but it's down to eight. Cyrus Torres from the outside. Still can't buy a basket. Still no good for Cyrus Torres. He is ice cold right now and in the worst way. Cyrus Torres already zero out of six from the three-point line. I mean, he is a known shooter, Stan. But if you're this cold, you're looking like Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Timely reference given the announcement of the latest DLC characters for the Mortal Kombat game. FEU trying to trap San Beda here. Really taking the uh, taking those precious seconds off of their shot clock. Rodney Tolentino with the turnover there. Tried to get fancy with the pass. Here's Sleet inside. Nails that one with a big boy move. Patrick Sleet showing off the strength. Bumping out the San Beda defender and finishing for two. FEU maintaining their pressure on defense. It's down to six. 
dropping down into a zone, throwing off the Tanbedo offense. Now, FE has to force more turnovers so they can get out on break and get easy shots since they're struggling in the half court. RC Kalimag from the top of the key. Fati with the board. Año Nuevo. He knows he had that mismatch, but he just threw it up there. Out of control, out of control Cholo Año Nuevo was in that play. He needs to say there was a one on three fast break that wasn't the best play for him. Lechones from the elbow, no good. And FEU just really keeping it to single possessions here. Again, that's the advantage of having Mo Fati inside. Literally head taller than a head taller than most of the guys in white. And uh, one of our officials, JP Eliaser, calling that foul right there. See the replay. Great outlet pass. That's the ball at TV move of the game. Big boy Patrick Sleet with the finish. A couple of subs coming back in here for Coach Andre Santos. Alioso's back. To run the offense, like Sean is taking a seat, Ronry Tolentino also headed back to the bench, Bismarck Lina taking his place. Probably a result of Mo Fati only getting a few minutes of rest here for FEU. Coach Denox recognizes the advantage of having Mo Fati inside. They're getting more defensive rebounds, getting out on the break. You know, they've been struggling, namely guys like Cyrus Torres, Royce Alforque, Patrick Sleet even, he misses for two, first two free throws. So they really need to get on the fast break, get some easy layups, get their confidence going. That's four for Sleep. 1.30 remaining here in the first quarter as FEU just clamping down on the San Beda Red Lions matcha team offense. And right on cue, that's an eight second violation. Coach Andre Santos not happy with that press break from his team. Nobody actually helped out Alioso. He was left alone on the island. And it's plays like that that can swing the momentum in your favor, especially when you focus on the defense. There's a reason why a lot of coaches preach defense being the foundation of a championship run. Time running out here for the FEU offense. Kalimag with a rebound. Well, good patience from FEU, just not resulting in a basket. Another missed outside shot. Alioso getting that pick there from Lina. Couldn't lose Fati there on defense, though. Trying another time with the pick. Sahonia had to pass out to Alioso. That's a left corner. Mid-range jumper. That's good. Great ball movement from San Beda. Finding the open man. That was a great skip pass to the corner. What triggered that whole movement was that skip pass to Alioso. Hear that whistle from Marlon Ariola, part of our officiating crew, as we take a look at that last play from San Beda. Great skip pass by Sahonia. And the extra bounce pass. Is that Itule? Yes, yes, it was. Nice floater. Sleet back at the line. Two for four in the game so far. Make that two for five. Oh, it's been a defensive masterclass from the first this first quarter, Stan. Both teams really scrambling with their half-court defense. We've seen quarter-court traps. We've seen full-court traps. Great ball screen defense from both teams. But, but it really hasn't translated to their offense. Our officiating crew clarifying who that foul is going to go on. It's against R.C. Kalimag, the elder Kalimag brother. As Patrick Sleet takes his fourth free throw right now. Uh, his sixth, rather. He's three for six on the afternoon. Here we see that full court trap, two to one trap from the Tamaraos, trying to force this turnover from San Beda. Lots of time for San Beda, kind of forced that last floater. And ball's gonna stay with San Beda. 14 on the shot clock, Kalimag on the inbound here. Almost stolen by Año Nuevo. And Año Nuevo was really sticking to him like tef uh, uh, really tough. Just, just a bit too much, Stan. No, Chola Nuevo, known for his defense, see the replay. Almost forcing a traveling violation on Alioso, but in the, you know, in that extra effort trying to get the ball, fortunately committing a foul. Medyo dumikit lang ng sobra to si Cholo Nuevo. Eight on the shot clock for San Beda. Alioso, inside the arc. That one's good. Great stop and fake from Alioso, making sure that he was in balance before he took that jumper. Five seconds to go, they get to dump it to Fati inside, miss! And at the end of the first quarter, the San Beda Red Lions match team 
lead 15 to 8. Based on your expression, Coach Mark, the cameras can't see it. Pero nasayangan ka doon, clearly. I mean, that's not the first time I've seen Mo Fati miss a point blank shot. I remember in the first game, you see the highlights here. It's a couple of great floaters from San Beda Bigs. Mo Fati has been a victim of missed point blank shots this whole tournament long. The FEU Tamaraos really struggled to get their offense going in that first quarter, and I'm sure that they're relieved that they can put that behind them as we take a break. We'll be right back with our second quarter of action. Bola TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. You are watching the second quarter of the match between the San Beda Red Lions and the FU Tamaras. Coach Andre of the San Beda Red Lions was honest in saying that they were emotionally drained after losing two consecutive games. Though not having enough time to process one loss after another, Coach Andre was keen in saying that their primary goal was to develop smart players who could read basketball. By reading, he meant making good decisions in a given scenario and playing as a team rather than merely showing individual talents. It's not about the question, did we win? But it's about how did we win? Stan, Coach Mark? Thank you very much, Enros Fernandez. You sounded really comfortable. How are you liking your first taste of action so far? Stan, you know what? I'm feeling so overwhelmed right now, but I am enjoying my first stint here in the field basket. That's how you get your feet wet, breaking you in through the Asia Basket Las Piñas Championship. Thank you very much, Ann Ross. We'll hear from her again in, in a bit. And as we start this second quarter, the San Beda Red Lions match team up by 15 to 8. In case you're just joining us, this is game number three of our Sunday quadruple header in this pocket tournament. Oh, what a rejection from Fatih. That one just hit air and Fatih cleans it up on uh, on the rebound. You want to see more of that from Mo Fati on the defensive end, being a menace in the paint. And you see him trying to seal early. Unfortunately, he lang siya nakita ng mga teammate niya. He was right there in the paint. Back on offense, ang FEU competente drawing the foul from Alioso, who couldn't believe it. Lagi naman, Stan. Do you ever see players who are very honest when it comes to getting fouls called in the Messi that all of that TV defensive play of the game, Mo Fati doing his best Dikembe Mutombo impression, sending that ball back. Not in his house. Or if you want to make another reference, another four-time defensive player of the year, that ball was sent to an NFZ, a no-fly zone. <laughs> you know, Stan, talking about FEU, when, when you see their team, you know, no one player really stands out, but the depth of Torres, Anunuevo, and Sleet, having those three guys, despite the absence of one LJ Gonzalez, has really propelled them to, to this good start in our Asia basket. Kalimag taking that jumper from inside the arc. Misses, and Alforque now running the controls for FEU. Nice pass to Fati with a slam! I have been asking for that. The past two games from Mo Fati, when he has two feet in the paint, just go up, young man. Finish it. Mo Fati acting like a beast in the paint as Alioso tried to answer back. Fati with a big boy board. Oh, Fati looking like Ben Wallace down here. I'm not Blocking, sure ben rebounding, Wallace and dunking. Could dunk like that, though. Well, Ben Wallace wasn't this big as he. The ball of that TV slam of the game. Mo Fati. He just threw it down on the San Beda Red Lions match team and took them to school. Probably see Mo Fati play in the majority of this game despite probably just foul trouble will keep him out on the floor. No fouls yet for Mo Fati though as jumps through the Alioso drive. That's a three-pointer for San Beda, no good. Again, a clean look for San Beda, but they're not getting any second chance opportunities because Mo Fati has been dominating the rebounding so far. And that's one thing San Beda might have to do, try to get some fouls on Mo Fati just so they can sort of even the odds here. And our crew chief, Ryan Soriano, 
Calling a foul on the floor. I think he's calling a foul on Richie Kalima. And to add on to what you were alluding earlier to Stan, you know, having Mo Fati, obviously a big difference for FEU, but San Beda is dead last in points in the paint per game here in Asia Basket. Something they have to address if they want a chance to win the games. Torres going back to Fati. And there's a foul before the shot. See, they can't really do anything if Fati is that deep in the paint. All they have to do, all the FEU players have to do is just lob the ball up. He's 7 foot 2. He's going to catch it and just turn. Are you implying that they employ a hack a mo or a hack a fatty? <laughs> if they can spare the fouls, then yeah. Sahonia setting things up here for the San Pedro Red Lions match team. Getting that screen from Lina. Sahonia with the floater way off. Oh, that's just the presence of Fatty and the other FEU bigs right there, clogging the lane. Competente draining that three. But I don't think that's going to count because of the whistle. Let's see what the officiating crew says. They're going to count that basket. It's a two-pointer. And the ball will stay with the FEU Tamaraus. I think that's a foul on and that's a call, And it's a call that Coach Denok Miranda clearly agrees with. FEU can tie or take the lead on this possession. Tempra just losing the ball. <laughs> Tempra has been trying, trying emphasis to score from that uh, from the block. And he hasn't done anything. It's been zero out of three from all his chances down there. And he cuffed the ball up like a kid cuffs up medicine. <laughs> Turnover here for San Ben and Nakabawi FEU by pressuring them into an eight-second violation. Important thing Nakabawi stand, but Hindi nila ma translate into points the turnovers that they forced. They have been successful turning those. For, they forced turnovers, but it, it's been empty possession so far. Alforquen with a nice drive inside. Tie ball game, and San Beda hasn't scored yet in the second quarter. It's a defense by FAU really pressuring San Beda into a lot of turnovers. Even in the half court, you're sending everything down to Mo Fati, if you've noticed. So it's really clogged the lane for San Beda. Back on offense, Songkuya tries from distance. Fati, another rebound. And this is the San Beda that played yesterday, settling for a lot of outside jumpers. Nobody getting downhill. Para nakakalamo ng rebounds, ito si Mo Fati as FU grades another three. They're now up by three. Cyrus Torres breaking out of that cold streak. We've got a timeout from the San Beda Red Lions matcha team as we take a look at that Cyrus Torres three once again. Oh, how sweet that must feel. It is his first three. It's now one out of seven from the three-point line. But that looked better because he was more in rhythm when he took that pull-up three. You need to just to get back into the swing of things, right? Momentum is a huge part of any game. And to break out of a cold, uh, a cold uh, rhythm and to just get your shot going, to find that stroke, as they say. You know, if you're a known shooter like Cyrus Torres, you can't get too deep into your own head and doubt yourself when you shoot that shot. You gotta keep shooting and I've, I've told this to a lot of my players I see the ball.tv kiss cam. Parang ayaw nilang magparaya. Parang nag-away. Oh, medyo shy, medyo shy sila. Busy. Busy sa phone. Busy. Pagbigyan naman natin, no? We'd like to thank Bola.tv, one of our major sponsors here in the 2023 Asia Basket Las Pinas Championship. May, may konting kurut ng pisngi. <laughs> you see the parents of Josh Nieto, actually. Right there in our Bola.tv kiss cam. I'm not sure. That, I think they're aware that they're on the kiss cam. <laughs> and then they <laughs> contemplate that bago sila nang move on. <laughs> oh. Peace cam daw. Hindi daw kiss peace, cam. Peace cam. <laughs> we'll, we'll take it, I guess. 646 remaining here in the half. Fati with another block. <laughs> Fatih has been all over the place in the second quarter. Really changed the tide for FEU. Año Nuevo dropping to Fatih inside and gets the end one. That was a great dump pass from Chola Año Nuevo. We see in the replay here, Fatih rejecting the Halima layup, getting the outlet and sprinting down. You always reward the big that sprints down back on offense. 
and the way that he just manhandled them on offense. It's as if Fati was the big boy taking everyone and just playing with them. <laughs> I could say the same about that last free throw from Mo Fati. He manhandled the ball on that one. Yun lang, napalakas yung free throw ni Fati. Another turnover for San Beda. Patrick Sleet with a drive. Nice layup. This is where FEO really thrives, forcing turnovers and getting out on the break. And they have athletes like Anonuevo and Sleet to finish at the rim. FEU with another steal. They're now up by seven. Felipe trying to increase that, but that's going to be a travel. <laughs> and that's one of those Kamot Ulo plays. <laughs> yeah. Ako yung Kamot na Ulo, the ball of the TV fast break begin from Patrick Sleet. Very athletic winger for FEU. Very good finisher as well. Top word pa yung finish na yun in transition. Pero kanina, that previous possession tong si Luke Felipe, yun nga, napakamot ang ulo ni Coach Mark. <laughs> Gusto niyo yung ano eh, puminish like Cholo and Patrick eh. Another 8 second violation for those keeping count, that's the third against San Beda. And that's the fourth consecutive turnover FEU has forced against San Beda. Not really doing a great job handling this pressure from FEU. And they haven't scored, Stan. This is already a 15-0 start in the second quarter. That's right. San Beda Red Lions Macha team really uh, really confused right now especially with the momentum that FEU has built. And uh, that's all thanks to the play of Mo Fati. Defensively he's rejected a couple of shots but the most important thing he's done is control the rebounding. And as one great coach, Coach Anza said, the one who controls the rebound controls the game. Richie Kalimag with that right corner three. If, if you're San Beda, you'll take that. That's a wide open three. Fati too strong there. And now the Red Lions are running. You gotta look for the hot hand. Who made the last shot? Sahonia didn't want to go back to Kalimag. Songkuya inside. Eight seconds on the shot clock. They're going back to the former Tamarau. Three's no good. Fati snatches it. Again, we saw Richie Kalima just hit a three. He'd want to go to the well again. Sleet forcing the issue. Alforque with a save. Finding that opening. Oh, Royce Alforque is so good finding the seams in the defense. Just when you, you when you think that he doesn't have space to attack anymore, then he's going to surprise you and finish over you. That ball sent directly into our area on that last possession. Great save by our team here. Our team not just excellent in production, they're also good at making sure our equipment and ourselves remain unharmed. <laughs> Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat indeed. Eight on the shot clock here for FEU. Año Nuevo couldn't finish. Ball stays with the Tamaraos. Again, the second quarter has Mo Fati's fingerprints all over it. On defense, the rebounding, and on offense, we've been looking for him actively in the paint. Fingerprints, baka pa nga palm eh. Palm. Kamay. Laki ng kamay ni Mo Fati. Fati just calling for just raising his hands. Ayun na. Fati down low. <laughs> I mean, it's not hard to pass the ball to somebody who's 7 foot 2. If he raises his hand, he looks like he's what, 8 foot? Right. The wingspan talaga eh, makikita mo oh, it, in, in uh, effect. Kasi hindi lang siya matangkad, Stan, di ba? For all our viewers at home. Mo Fati has very long arms as well. First free throw, no good for the 24-year-old Senegalese big. Now, that's one thing maybe San Beda can do as we see Aimee Hernandez, the better half of RC Kalima. Nice to see significant others in any game. But of course, not only athletes, but fellow players. Yeah, and you know, it's a, it is a Sunday. You know? No traffic in the metro. It's a great time to watch the games here in Villar Coliseum. Today, though, she is a spectator, not a player. Seven-point game here. FU turning the tide throughout this quarter. Back to Alioso. And that's another three-pointer. Bad closeout by Cholo Anonuevo. He knows that Arce Kalima is a very good shooter. There was no need to really thrust his arm out when RC already released the basketball. Got bailed out right there. So my three free throws, ito si RC Kalimag. And 
that's the worst thing you can give a, sh uh, a known scorer like RC Kalima. Let him see the ball go in the basket, give him some confidence. This might get RC Kalima going. Second free throw is good for Kalimag. Make that two for three for Kalimag, who's currently serving his residency as well. I didn't really get the opportunity with the UP Fighting Maroons, but hopefully with Sambeda, they're going to graduate a lot of guys next year. He will get that spot and he will be tasked to score and lead the Sambeda Red Lions. Bagunu down low. Fadi tried to put it back. Wala pa rin. Alioso on the fast break. Good job by the FU Tamaraus containing that break though on transition. You see how fast FU just get down, gets down on the floor. They have a lot of athletes who can be actually track stars if they wanted to. Alioso from long distance Ooh. and gets a wedgie. That's a first wedgie. First wedgie of the tournament, I think. I believe that is if you're keeping track of those off-kilter stats. <laughs> Shout out to the starters. The and starters like would be proud. Yes, yeah. they would be the proud. starters would be so happy. Hopefully one day, ito si Lee Ellis will make his <laughs> way to Manila and play a pickup game here to complete the journey niya of oh, playing that, a pickup game. That would game be fun. In uh, every country in the world. I've been following that journey. Miguel Ona inside gets the N1. Now, this is a crucial time stand for San Beda because Mo Fatty is not on the floor. He's so getting some risk. See that pass. Great seal by Miguel Ona. Deep seal on Ronnery Tolentino. As I was saying earlier, with Mo Fati on the bench getting some rest, this is a great time for Sambeda to get to the rim. We don't see any good rim protectors for FEU aside from Miguel Ona here. And we want to see Alioso and Tolentino, Kalimag, probably attack, try to get some fouls. FEU not, not doing the best job at finishing those three-point plays, and that's one reason why they're only up by seven despite the strong showing they've had here in the second quarter. R.C. Kalima tried to go left there, had to give it up back to Alioso. Five on the shot clock. Alioso losing control. It's going to be a turnover. That's a bad spacing on offense for San Beda. You know, when you're going downhill, you don't want to see your own teammate clogging the lane. FEU trying to make sure that they end the quarter strong because they already started the job, but Alforque throws it up into the hands of the F of the San Beda Red Lions. That's going to be a foul against FEU. And I just received some information. Apparently, the starters are now known as the No Dunks podcast. That's right. Thank you, Sir Joseph, for that uh, piece of information. 19 on the shot clock here. Sahonia goes through that pick. Very familiar with the FEU system, but he was flummoxed right there. Rodri Tolentino, air ball. Ona with that defensive board. Año Nuevo inside. <laughs> Swooping with that layup. <laughs> the jelly finish from Cholo Año Nuevo, but they're not getting down on defense. Etulia just earning those two free throws. That finish was too nice that everybody celebrated. He forgot to get down at the ball at that TV drive of the game. I don't know if took off from almost the free throw line. Call him Cheryl because he just swoops right in. <laughs> I like that reference, Stan. Hopefully the younger, the younger players who are watching us understand who we referenced. The great Cheryl Swoops, one of the best women's basketball players of all time. Shout out Houston Comets. Four-time champs in the late 90s and early 2000s as Etulie goes one for two at the line. And free throws have not been very good for both teams. FEU is just shooting 8 out of 16 from the free throw line. San Beda not any better. Just two out of six. Patrick Sleep drawing that whistle. That's not going to count for the FEU Tamaraus. They're already up by eight. Quick lineup change here for Coach Andre Santos, Etulia, and Alioso head to the bench. Bismarck Lina back in. You know, Stan, if you notice the difference between FEU and San Bede, especially with their guys going downhill, FEU guys, when they get that momentum going, they go downhill with force. Parang pag bumanga ka, masakit eh. Right. Diba? So it really dislodges the help from the San Bede guys, and they're able to finish because 
number one, they're athletic and big. And number two, you know, the San Medehelp isn't there because they get bumped off easily. Second chance opportunity here for Bagunu, no good. And going back to that previous point, Coach Mark, there's a reason why coveted badge sa NBA 2K yung downhill. Because that's an actual <laughs> skill that can help you score quick points. It is. You know, a lot of trainers now try to teach players to go downhill in different ways. But if you don't go with strength, just like that on that second chance by Bismartina, if you don't go with strength, you won't be able to finish well. Bismarck Lina drawing another foul here. He's going to get two shots. No, Bismarck Lina, another uh, former UP fighting maroon, didn't really have the chance to show what he had because of insanely deep front court rotation from UP. But now he's hoping here that with Sanbeda, he's probably going to lose Clifford Hopia next year. So there is a slot for guys like Bismarck Lina to show what they have and hopefully you know, regain some confidence that they lost. Bismarck Lina was part of the UAAP Season 84 champion, UP Fighting Maroons. Also spent time with them, as you alluded to, Coach Mark, in Season 85. Following this year of residency, he will have three playing years in the NCAA. FU Tamaraus calling a timeout here with 1.45 remaining at the half. Break. We'll be right back to wrap up our first half of action. Walla TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Walla TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Walla TV. This is our coverage of the 2023 Asia Basket Las Piñas Championship presented to you by Bola.TV. The FEU Tamaraos have surprised the San Beda Red Lions matcha team and they've went on a scoring binge 22 to 7 up to this point. It could have been more but their free throw shooting has been very bad. It's been, they're only shooting 50% from the free throw line. Let's see if they can do better because if, if you're FEU, you want to put San Beda away early in this game. Cyrus Torres, left corner three. That was short, back to Torres. Sleet pulling up from the elbow. Wala pa rin, this is a second chance shot. Not really Pat's uh, forte pull up jump shots. He's, more, he's a lot better going downhill, attacking the rim. With. Meanwhile, Lopez seeing his first minutes of action here for Coach Andre Santos. Nice pass to Tolentino through the trees of FEU. Tolentino inside. That's going to be a goal 10. Tolentino getting just enough space to throw it over to see the replay here. Right there. Enough timing. Nalit lang ng konti si Mo Fati dun. Pero inabut pa nyo ganong kataas. But the ball was already on its downward motion, which is why I considered the goal 10. Yun. Patrick Sleep goes through the contact. As I said, that is more of Pat's game. Getting down in the paint and finishing. That's 10 for Sleep. Still an eight point game. Under a minute left here at the half. Sahonia from the outside, no good. Torres, really quick there as a collision takes place on the floor. That's going to go against Mofati. Mofati, let's try to seal, but you, know, you have to understand when, whenever you have that smaller guy on you. Right there, he's trying to seal early. If you have that smaller guy on you, you have to expect him to try to draw the charge on you. Of, of course, referees are going to see it's a smaller guy. Kahit konti lang yung contact, you can always you know, act it out. Disadvantage ka si Mo Fati dun. First foul against Mo Fati as San Beda tries to speed it up on offense. Corner three, wala pa rin for the Red Lions. Shot clock's been turned off. 20 seconds here at the half. Cholo Año Nuevo saying we should get this one shot. Sleet taking his time here. He's got Rondre Tolentino on him. Time running out. Sleet wants to finish this. Nice spin move. Sanbeda, one last shot. Tolentino's way off and at the half. 
the FEU Tamaraus have an eight point advantage. It's 32 to 24. The San Beda Red Lions match team only held to nine points. We're going to return with our halftime coverage. We'll see you again here at the 2023 Asia Basket Las Pinas Championship for the second half. Bola TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. Bola TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. After a half of basketball action in the third game of day three, we are treated to a great match between these two top collegiate teams who get to each play in their respective leagues. FU Tamaraus entering the half with an eight-point lead versus the Mendiola base squad, San Beda University. Halftime score, 50, 32, San Beda University, 24. Now speaking of treat, here we go. It's a time again where Bala.TV gets to give out treats here at the Bala.TV halftime show. Of course, with yours truly, Uncle Ken of Bala.TV. And right now, we are live, of course, at the Villar Coliseum here for the 2023 Bala.TV Asia Basket Las Piñas Championship. Here we go. All right, now, before time to start, siyempre, pakinggan mo natin ang ating mga nandito, the crowd here at the Villar Coliseum. Ito, sa side ng FEU Tamaraus. Mga fans sa FEU Tamaraus, come on, make some noise! Yo, go FEU! Ito naman sa other side. Papatalo ba mga fans? San Beda University, San Beda University, make some noise! Pa, mukhang kayo panalo dito. <laughs> okay, so again, this is the Bola.TV Halftime Show. And of course, we have something special in store for you. So sa lahat ng mga nakapag-download ng Bola.TV app. And of course, who got to like our Bola.TV page? And of course, nakapag-post sa kanika nila mga social media accounts, Facebook, Instagram, with the hashtag Bola.TVPH and hashtag Bola.TV. Bola.TV, there you go. You get a chance to be part of the raffle. Okay, so ngayon tatawagin natin ang ating isa sa mga live streamers of Bola.TV. Palapakan naman natin. Bigyan natin a great, great big hello kay Cheesecake. Ayan, one of our great, beautiful, and entertaining live streamers of Bola.TV. Guys, ang Bola.TV is a proud partner of Asia Basket. This is where you can get to watch basketball games and esports all live and of course free. Bola.tv, www.bola.tv. And of course, you may download our app, Google Play Store, free also. Ito na. So let's see. So sana nandito ang ngayon because of course, we are giving out 500 pesos gift card courtesy of Bola.tv. Okay, nandito ka ba? Rod Custodio. Alina, Rod. All right, I'm bliss. I'm bliss, the man in si Rod Custodio. Hello, I'm bliss. All right, man. Congratulations. Easy as that. Okay, here. All right, photo in the dial. Oh, but ano, um, short message naman. Tapos gusto mo batiin mga friends mo na doon. Ayan, ayan, ayan. Okay, sige. Shout out kay Anton, kay Butchoy, tsaka kay Jello. All right, shout out. Okay, there you go. So, ito, let's sa mga live streamers sa Bola Dacho. Kawaii ka naman. Kawaii. Kawaii ka sa kanila. Ayan. All right, so again, uh, this is Bola.TV Halftime Show. And of course, this is the 2023 Bola.TV Asia Basset Las Piñas Championship. More action to come when we come back. Game analysis and the continuation of these two teams. See you.
Bullet TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 90 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bullet TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. Bola TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. Bola TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. You are watching the halftime of the match between the San Better Red Lions and the FEU Tamaras. We are all used to seeing people from the basketball field dominating our big screen, but this time, lo and behold, we are joined with one of the star players of the PVL, Miss Aimee Hernandez. Aimee, welcome to the Phil Basket. Aimee, we know that you have high regard for volleyball, but as we celebrate Phil Basket, is basketball also a sport that you admire? Uh, of course, kasi um, super competitive din ang sport na to and madami tayo matututunan na madadala din natin outside, outside the sport. Alright, I mean, we know that volleyball has a great place in your heart, but of course, RC Kalimag of the San Better Red Lions also has that same magnitude. I mean, as star players of your respective fields, how do you support each other besides watching each other's games? Uh, siguro yung feedback na nabibigay namin, syempre, uh, para sa mga athlete and syempre yung um, advice from perspective ng iba yung kailangan, syempre, mas nakikita nila outside, so, yun. I mean, thank you so much for gracing the show and we hope that you're having fun here at the Philip Basket. Stan, Coach Mark? Thank you very much, Enros. Great to see the stars coming out in support of the Asia Basket Las Pinas Championship. At the half here, for game number three of our quadruple header, the FU Tamaraos are up 32 to 24 against the San Beda Red Lions match team. What stood out to you in that first half, Coach Mark? Well, number one, it was the turnovers that San Beda forced. That got that, that got them back in the game. You know, they forced, I think, five straight turnovers in that second quarter stand, which they almost converted in every possession. You see the highlights from our first half. You know, Sahonia got a good start. He made a couple baskets, but kind of disappeared towards the end of the half. Alioso also started well. San Beda as a team, they, they played well in the first quarter, but those turnovers in the second quarter really changed the tempo of the game, allowed FEU to go on the break and fi with finishes like that from Patrick Sleep. And how can we miss Mo Fati? He had the palm, palm prints? What do you call it? Palm, palm marks? Uh -huh. On that second quarter, all over that second quarter. Defensively, offensively, he had that putback jam. Mo Fati, if he keeps this up, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with come the UAP. That Mo Fati slam, the clear highlight of that first half as we look at the leading scorers from both squads for FEU. Sleet with 10, Fati with 5, Alforque with 4, for San Beda, Alioso, and Kalimag with 5, Sahonia with 4 as we look at the halftime stats. Again, San Beda falling to the trap of shooting too much from the outside. I mean, they, they do have some good shooters, but they're only two out of 17 from the three-point line. And FEU, this lead could have been bigger if not for shooting 50% from the free throw line. Turnover, San Beda, around six or seven of that just in the second quarter, already have nine for the half. Rebounding equal assists, just a bit for FEU, but the field goal percentages from both teams, FEU only shooting one out of 11, with Cyrus Torres, their best shooter, only one out of eight from the three-point line. San Beda Red Lions not much better from the from the, from long range only two for 17 and the free throw story also problematic if you're a coach looking at these stats after this game we have a fourth that is our main event for this Sunday evening 
You've got Corsa Tires taking on the Ateneo Blue Eagles. Free admission here at the Villar Coliseum. We'll take a break. Coming right back with the third quarter. Bullet TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bullet TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. Bola TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. Bola TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. Bola TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. Welcome back to our coverage of the Asia Basket Las Piñas Championship. Moments away from the third quarter kicking off here. Stan C and Coach Mark Dandan calling the action between the FEU Tamaraus and the San Beda Red Lions matcha team. As we look at the FEU Tamaraus, what can they do better heading into this second half? Free throws? Free throw shooting, Stan. This could have been a big lead already for FEU if they only made more free throws. But... They have to be keep the aggressiveness on the defensive end. The, they did well with that 2-1 to one quarter court trap. They did well with that blindside trap. So they, they have to keep going with that. They can't press their, their heads knowing that they have an 8-point lead here in halftime because San Beda with the likes of Richie Kalimag, uh, RC Kalimag, they do have the firepower to get back in the game. FU Tamaraus, uh, no Patrick Sleet here to start the second half. Competente, Tempra, Año Nuevo in Sleet's place. Alforque and Fati starting things off for them. Meanwhile, for San Beda, starting in this second half, you've got Song Kuya, who did not start the game. Alioso also joining him in the backcourt. There's Lina, RC Kalimag, sorry, Richie Kalimag, and uh, Brian Sahonia to complete the five on the floor. Sahonia inside, sending himself to the free throw line. Smart first play there from Sanbeda, trying to get more points in the paint. Taking Mo Fati outside. Mo Fati was guarding Bismarck Lina. Bismarck Lina was the one who set that ball screen for Alioso. So they're trying to draw Mo Fati out. 
It's a good adjustment from And Coach Andre Santos. Speaking of Coach Andre Santos, let me ask you this, uh, Coach Mark, from your perspective, uh, what, what's the logic behind bringing in your uh, players who are serving their residency, your Team B lineup here in a, in a tournament like this and not getting your Team A guys some run? Well, you do want your Team B guys to get more reps, number one. Also maybe because, you know, we have Perpetual, we have CSB, and we do have Zeletran here. Teams that will face Sanbeda deep into the playoff run when it comes to the NCAA. So maybe they're not trying to get scouted already. Alios, a nice pass there in transition. Lina, he's got Fati on him. That's a mismatch against him. Three-pointer no good for Sahonia. Año Nuevo with the rebound. One out of, oh, that's two out of 18 now from the three-point line to San Beda. I don't know why they keep going down to that well. That's not a very deep well. In the hands of Fati inside. That's in and out like a burger. That's a foul against San Beda. Well, Fati again. I mean, he had the right idea. That was a good-looking hook shot. But that was probably one of the sharpest hook shots I've ever seen. No arc whatsoever. Alforque inbounding here. 14 on the shot clock for FEU. Tempra getting double teamed in the post, but he doesn't mind. <laughs> That's the first successful attack of James Tempra in the post. Well, that is his strong side, you know, going with his left hand. That's something she, he should have done earlier in the game. The first field goal of the game for James Tempra. And Sanpeda with an unforced error there. Well, got caught by surprise. FEU dropping down into a zone. They weren't ready for that. Very disorganized offense from Sanpeda. Dipa nakatulung na nagkagulatan sila, which led to that last turnover. Mikasamang sigaw yung zone eh. Magugulat ka talagi. Fati coming out for that screen. Can't free up Año Nuevo. Alforque, good save. Three-pointer here for Año Nuevo. Short. Ryan Sahonia had to slow down there. Nice crossover, pulling up. Yes! Oh, Brian Sahonia, that's a, a better look for him. He never rushed any move that he did there, creating enough separation to open, up, open him up for a jump shot. That's eight for Sahonia. He's got 18.5 points per game so far in this tournament as Alforque nails that floater. It's a favorite move by Royce Alforque. The push hand floater with his right. Six for Alforque here. Alioso looking for a pick. Didn't find it. Sahonia from the outside looking for double digits. Wala pa rin. Like Popo and Basha, he gets a second chance, but it's denied by Fati. Stan, we see the chess match between Coach Andre Santos and Coach Denok Miranda. You know, Coach Andre showed that he was going to bring out as you see the replay here. Mo Fati, go go gadget arms, but Bo was going down already. And to continue what I started, Coach Andre started out trying to bring Mo Fati by setting by having his man set ball screens. FEU countering with a zone so that Mo Fati doesn't have to come up anymore. Six point game here. Still FEU with the advantage. Competente trying to cross over in Kalimag. Competente really wanted to take it to the rack. Now he's been aggressive the whole game long. No, he hasn't made any shots from the outside, but Competente seeing the gap in the defense. Would have been better served if he finished with his offhand. Renzo Competente at the line. Perfect so far throughout this tournament at the charity stripe. We'll see with the second shot stand if he's going to stay perfect. Binabati natin just to compliment the player, siyempre, ayaw natin i See? Still perfect. Good free throw shooter. I think that's the first guy who goes 2 out of 2 for FEU. 18-year-old Renzo Competente in his first season with the FEU Tamaraus. Songkuya from the outside. <laughs> and Fati, easy rebound. Fati calling for it. But the Tamaras are taking their time here. Tempra for three. Rare open three-point shot for FEU. James Tempra, not really the guy you think would shoot that three, but he's open. Hoping to heat up like a fever. No good for Kalimag. Sanbeda couldn't answer back on that last trip. Patrick Sleet back here for FEU. 
Sleet with a spin to Tempra inside. Oh, oh. Sweet feed from Patrick Sleet to James Tempra with the finish. Eight now for Tempra. Kalimba going for Oxford here. It's Good job, by Fati with the board here for FEU. Alforque inside, passing out the sleep. FEU trying to confuse Sanbeda, and that paid off through that three pointer. Quick timeout here for Coach Andre Santos. They want to change things up after that Bolada TV three point shot of the game. FEU with a swinging action. Great extra pass from James Tempera. We'll take a break. Be back with more of the third quarter. Bola TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. This is our coverage of the Asia Basket Las Pinas Championship presented to you by Bola.TV. Like, share, and subscribe to Bola.TV and Phil Basket YouTube and Facebook pages. Thank you very much for making us a part of your Sunday afternoon and for welcoming us into your homes. A little under six minutes remaining here in the third quarter. The FU Tamarao is now up by 16 against the San Beda Red Lions Macha team. Coach Denok with the excellent adjustment going down to that zone, knowing San Beda not really shooting well. They're not shooting very well from the outside. So they're forcing San Beda to take more outside shots. And they know Mo Fati can get rebounds like that. Kalima turning it over on that last San Beda possession. Sleet with a nice no look pass inside. And Nuevo was looking for an alley oop. <laughs> it's a very simple pass from Chola and Nuevo. Just Really lobbing it up there. And he knows that Mo Fati is going to get his fingertips on that. That's a third foul on Bismarck Lina. He's really got his hands full with Mo Fati. Año Nuevo posting up. Almost got that double. Easy floater for him. Beautiful shot by Chola Año Nuevo. That hook shot with his offhand makes that shot even prettier. If you notice right there, Lina just really held on to the ball for not even a second. <laughs> so all he's doing right now on offense is screening, making sure that someone opens up. Three to go. Kalimag for three. Yes, finally. Perfect zone breaker, Richie Kalimag. They're thrown off a bit by that 1 3 1 zone, FEU. Just try to change up their defenses. Competente getting that screen from Año Nuevo. They're not really getting Mo Fati involved in the offense very much, but it's his activity that's swinging the favor for FEU here. No, well, it's it's it starts with the defensive end. Mo Fati's been dominating the defensive rebounding in this whole ball game. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Lina trying his luck against Fati to no avail. Trying his luck is the right term. Not really what you want. Sleet, sak sak sa loob. Still can't finish. Competente now. And the end one. Competente wanted the contact first before making the shot. He didn't want anything easy. Dare we say he's a competent pickup for the FEU Tamaraus. Indeed he is. You see that great tap by Royce Alforque out to Competente. Finishing even with the contact. That should count as an offensive rebound for Alforque. Not sure if that counts as an assist, though. Could be both. Should be both. He should re be rewarded for both. That's a really smart play. Alforque taking a seat. Bagunu in his place. And Cyrus Torres getting ready to get back on the floor. We haven't seen much of Torres here in the second half as well. No, he was ice cold to start our game. He's only one out of seven from 
three-point line. Cyrus Torres, their leading scorer for this tournament, he only has three points. 18-point game as it, as it uh, just slips out of the hands of the San Beda Red Lions match team. Still a lot of time for them to regain momentum. Let's see what happens on this trip with five seconds on the shot clock. Three-pointer, no good. And one more chance here for the Red Lions. Open, Kalimag inside. Couldn't nail it off the glass. Richie was bothered by the help of FEU, but that zone has been doing wonders defensively for the Tamaraos. Ronre Tolentino getting that foul call. They're getting these stops, FEU. They're getting down on the break. And San Beda has been very poor in transition. They're only sending a couple guys down for safeties. Now they're in the penalty with three and a half minutes left. Cholo Año Nuevo preparing to take his free throws as we thank Smart, the official internet provider of the 2023 Asia Basket Las Pinas Championship, and Frankie's New York Buffalo Wings, the official food sponsor of the 2023 Asia Basket Las Pinas Championship. Año Nuevo no good on the first and the second. Again, free throw shooting. If anything, if anything was a problem for FU, is their free throws. Tolentino unable to lay it in. Año Nuevo with his fifth rebound. Bagunu passing inside and Ona turns it over. On the fast break, here's Sahonia. And they just stop the movement right there. Credit FEU on their defense. And another rebound for Bagun. It's going to be FEU ball. Great transition defense from FEU. You know, stopping the ball on point. The help was there. The rotation was there. Coach Denok Miranda very happy with how they're defending San Beda. And part of what makes transition defense great is just stopping the movement, containing it making sure that they're, they aren't able to get on the break for a layup. And if you're San Beda, on the other hand, you don't want to see your guys dribbling 94 feet. You, know, you want to see those forward passes. You want to swing the ball side to side, especially with their early offense. You don't want guys going down paint, going down to the paint and getting clogged up and no, not having no one to pass the ball to. At the line here is Aaron Bagunu entering his second playing year for the FEU Tamaraos, going one for two at the line. <laughs> Coach Mark with the Tito jokes. Tito Tito na talaga, sir. RC Kalimag swinging it. Calling for it again here. And Lopez almost lost it. Four seconds off the elbow. Sleet with the board. Incredible energy on defense from FU. Hindi lang sila gumagalaw stan, eh. You hear them shouting, you hear them talking. Very disruptive what they're doing right now. Actually, mas malakas pa yung bosses ng FEU than everyone else here on the floor. <laughs> like, we've got our headphones on and we can hear them pretty clearly. Malakas na malakas talaga. And that's another fast break opportunity for FEU. Sleet with a good recovery. Hanging, couldn't finish. Año Nuevo, one more time. No good. Sleet, another rebound and taken away by San Beda. Missed opportunity there for FPU. Point blank shots twice. Couldn't convert it. Medyo nakakaduling siguro when you're that close and you've got all those hands in your face. Tolentino with the drive. Didn't get that foul. Ball's gonna stay here with San Beda. Ronald Tolentino very out of control on that, on that drive earlier. Didn't really have the advantage. There was help defense there from FPU. He was forced to, with a tough floater. Good thing they hustled for that offensive rebound. Luke Felipe checking back in here for Coach Denok Miranda. Nice steal by Sneet to Torres. This is going to be easy for Cyrus Torres. Again, defense to offense for FEU. That has been the key the second and this third quarter. 21, that's the lead now for the FEU Tamaraos. Meanwhile, Kalima just threw it up, made that three. That's five points for RC Kalimag. And now we're getting another timeout with 142 remaining. Let's take a look at that last three-pointer. Oh, that three-pointer happened because they moved the ball side to side. They had that flasher in the middle of the zone. Etule 
with a great look for Kalimag drifting to the corner. I'll take a quick break and be right back. Bola TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. Bola TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. Bola TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e-games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. You're watching the third quarter between the match against the Sun Better Alliance and the FEU Tamaros. Coach Denok Miranda of the FEU Tamaros once donned that FEU jersey years back, earning him two UAP champion titles. Having gone through the FEU system himself, he aims to instill the importance of a good defense and a winning attitude to which he described as walang aayaw. Moreover, one of his key players, team captain LJ Gonzalez, expressed the itch of wanting to dominate the court once again after an unfortunate injury. He is anticipated to return this August. Being a spectator, he describes the FEU as a movie. Nagpapabugbog sa una, pero lalaban sa huli. Stan, Coach Mark. Thank you very much, Enros. Parang FPJ reference pa nga, right? You get, you get that Pinoy hero comeback in those action movies. I'm not sure if you were able to catch those growing up, Enros. 54-36, that's the score here. FEU just laying the smack down on the, S, uh, on the San Beda Red Lions matcha team. Uh, try to look at the bench kung meron silang good morning towels dun. <laughs> Let's just keep piling on the Tito references here, Coach Mark, shall we? Four on the shot clock. Torres is faded on that jumper. It doesn't take much to get Cyrus Torres going. He got the fast break layup now with a tough fadeaway. That's seven for Cyrus Torres. And you can see the panic setting in for the San Beda Red Lions. But you wouldn't know it after Lopez made that three. Oh, great patience by Lopez there. That's you say panic. That is true. This zone has put San Beda into a rush, doing everything in a panic. Elbert Lopez, good outlet pass. Sorrentino keeping it inbounds for San Beda. And FEU forcing another turnover. Again, you know, if San Beda in a rush to do everything. They're trying too hard to get the ball from one end to the other, resulting in multiple turnovers. Well, there's not a lot of discipline going on in Coach Andre. Coach Andre, if you're looking at his face, definitely not the happiest camper here in Villar Coliseum. That's the 14th turnover for San Beda, and Coach Andre might want to listen to Jordan Sparks, as she would say, one step at a time. There's no need to rush. <laughs> and he called me the Tito. Offensive rebound here for FEU. Sleep being patient here on offense. Losing it on that drive. Good containment here by the FEU Tamaraos on defense. The transition defense has been on point the whole game for the Tamaraos. Eight second differential between shot clock and game clock. Five seconds here. Kalimak's got to move. Let's it go from the outside. Can't find the bucket. Six seconds to go here for FEU. Patrick Sleet is running. Nice pass to the right corner for three. That's off. And at the end of the third quarter, we've got a 19-point game on our hands. The FEU Tamaraos are up 57 to 38. See the highlights from the third quarter. San Beda started well. Sahonia with that pull-up. But once that FEU defense got settled in, they threw multiple zone looks at them. We, we, we saw a 2-3 zone. We saw a 1-3-1 zone. 
forcing San Beda for some outside shots. R.C. Kalimag hit one. I think Richie Kalimag hit another. But it's mostly just FEU dominating the last two quarters, actually. And Cyrus Torres finally getting hot in that third. Let's see if he can keep it up in the fourth quarter. Offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. Bola TV is recruiting. We are offering an open contract where you can get a split revenue offer of 92 to 8 ratio from the virtual gift feature. Bola TV is also looking for e games and live streaming professionals to join and expand our community. The live streamers with the most fans on social media can apply as our official live streamers. We will contact you to screen your skills. See you here at Bola TV. Bola TV is recruiting. It's a different story for the San Beda Red Lions matcha team who had a dominant run in Malaysia three months ago. But here in this tournament in Las Piñas, in their third game, they're still looking for that first win. Well, well it's a totally different lineup from the one we saw in Malaysia. But, you know, San Beda prides itself in being a program that plays great basketball no matter the level that they're playing in. A rich history of championships for both San Beda and FEU. They're among the leaders in championship titles in their respective collegiate leagues. RC Kalimag looking for options. Aliajo kicking out. Lopez from the free throw line. No good. Great scrambling defense from FEU. Helping the helper, closing out properly, forcing San Beda to a really tough shot. First possession of the quarter here for FEU as Torres from way outside, short. Alforque with a second chance opportunity with a fade, yes. Specialty of the house for Royce Alforque. He's been doing that since he was in the juniors program for FEU. Alforque, a homegrown Tamarao. Sanbeda almost with another turnover just moments ago. Five seconds on the shot clock here. What's Arsi Karimag doing? Throws it out of bounds. That pressure, unrelenting. Unrelenting. You know, they don't stop for nothing, FEU. They're switching those ball screens. Sometimes they're trapping it even. But you see guys on the weak side rotating. Whenever there's a skip pass to the weak side, you see guys rotating to the open guy. Great defense by FEU. And what they're doing right now is they're keeping their foot on the gas pedal. They were able to get momentum in their favor in the second quarter, and they haven't really let up through the course of this game. No, we, we talked about it in halftime, Stan. We, we, we said FEU has to hang their hat on defense. When they turned the game after that 15-8 to start by San Beda, they turned the game because of their defense, with their trapping and with their ball screen defense. That pressure has to be unrelenting, and that's what we've been seeing from FEU the past, what, 20 minutes or so now? James Tampra in double digits. As we look at some of our fans here in attendance at the Villar Coliseum, James Tampra actually came from the Cebu Eastern College, which is a Chinoy school that plays in the Sesafi. Interesting to note, we don't really see a lot of recruits coming out from that school. Mid shot once again for RC Kalimag. And the Tamaraos, their energy is still driving them to push. And Torres drills that three. And it's safe to say that that cold streak is behind him. Great look from Cholo Año Nuevo. Realizing where his shooter was, giving that skip pass. Songkuya with a soft shot there. They needed that bucket. That's a rare point in the paint for San Beda. Something they've been struggling with this whole tournament. Speaking of the paint, Mo Fati has been noticeably absent here in the second half. With how their defense is going, Effie doesn't really need his presence right now. Give him some rest. Buenaventura with an offensive rebound. Couldn't find position inside, so he got denied. Oh, you have to love the hustle 
that Buenaventura is playing with despite the one on three advantage for San Pedro. And at the very least, you have to appreciate their effort in the paint earlier. They were like a stingy landlord. Torres with the drive, nice pass. Buenaventura just hits the side of the backboard. Another opportunity for FEU. Torres for three. For those keeping count, I believe that's the third three-pointer for Cyrus Torres. And that's the ball at the TV three-point shot of the game. Cyrus Torres has found his form in the second half. All it took was one layup to get him going. And that's what good shooters do. And for players like Cyrus Torres, who are the leaders of their respective teams, something must have happened for the switch to be flipped. Now you're looking at our lineup for the Sunday evening. We've got one more game happening after this. It's the Ateneo Blue Eagles taking on Chorus Attires. That matchup coming right after this. Free admission here at the Villar Coliseum. And if you scan this QR code on the lower left, you'll get taken to the TV app, which is a new way to enjoy your games. Their streamers present things in a different way than we're used to, and they give away some prizes, including cash. Now, here's the slate for tomorrow. We know that the sauna is happening, so if you're staying at home, you've got four games to tide you over through the events of July 24th. A uh, game start at 1 p.m. San Beda will be playing that game. They're taking on the Filipinas Aguilas, and all those games will stretch out until 7 p.m. tomorrow, July 24th. Oh, it's a holiday. It's a great time to be here in Villar Coliseum. We welcome everyone to watch our games here for the Asia Basket Tournament. I mean, all the games have been exciting. I mean, team, a lot of teams have showed a lot of potential so far. We're also mindful of the transport strike that will take place over the next three days. So traveling might be a bit uh, difficult. You might want to plan your trips. But on the bright side, here at Villar Coliseum, we're in the south. So we're a bit outer in the traffic of the north when we saw it. One of the positives of us being down south. Año Nuevo, step back three. That's good. That's a pretty step back move from Cholo Año Nuevo. Did you see the distance he covered Stan on that step back? Total separation from his defender. It was as if he was taking a page out of James Harden's playbook. Kaliwete pa. Kaliwete pa. <laughs> exactly. Here's Brian Sahonia kicking out to Alioso. Couldn't answer back. And if you're San Beda, is it a good idea na makipagsagutan to go 3-4-3? Three three? Ooh, Kalibag's taking a nasty fall there. Let's see what the referees call here. So, I think that's Buenaventura who tried to draw the charge. But Kalimag on landed Kalimag. on Buenaventura, so in a way he broke his fall, but Kalimag was clutching his knee there as he ran into Buenaventura. Ooh. Oh. Looked like a move straight out of Darby Allen's playbook. Landing on top of Buenaventura. We hope both guys are okay. R.C. Kalima is uh, back on his feet. Richie Kalima, rather. Back on both feet. So that's promising. He was clutching that left knee earlier when he landed on Buenaventura. And it's just a relief any time a player appears to have taken a hard fall, but they're able to walk on their own two feet. Oh, that's the important thing. You want to see all those players safe. You know, the last thing you want to happen, especially in the game like this, are injuries. Especially when you're uh, in a game like this, na 30 points that in a manu spread, and you know, you're just trying to, uh, if you're on the losing end of the game, you're just trying to move on, try to take whatever positive lessons you can from an experience like this. And then if you're on the winning end, you, you're just minutes away from closing it out. You also don't want, can't afford to have an injury. Oh, and the one thing you can't afford if you're FEU is to build bad habits. You know, you're up 30 points. I see their guys still going hard on defense, getting those rebounds, going on fast breaks. But, you know, you can't let yourself get too happy with what you have right now. This being what could be their third win in the tournament, propelling them hopefully to the playoffs. But, again, if you coach Denok Miranda, you want to keep building on these great habits they're doing on defense. And you don't want to see your players kind of slack off, thinking, oh, it's a 30-point lead, we can take a break. Right? So, they have to be sharp and you have to keep in mind that you're playing for something more. Not only the Asia Basket title, but looking forward, it's also the UAP title that they're gunning for. Right, and uh, for the NCAA teams, the NCAA championship in Season 99. And building off what you mentioned earlier, Coach Mark, about the tournament format, uh, each team will be going through a round-robin phase of every team in their respective groups. And then uh, by Thursday, we'll be having 
the quarterfinal stage, or the final four stage rather, where the top two teams of each bracket will advance. The one seed of Group A meets the two seed of Group B and vice versa. And then the winners of both matches go on to our final round, which will take place on July 30th. That's Ooh. Sunday. Oh! Hard shot there. Going over the screen. I think that's Cholo and Nuevo trying to dive after the loose ball. Too much bounce. Too much bounce. See the replay, the ball was tapped out. Cholo trying to hustle for that ball. Kind of mistimed this jump. Napati din siya kasi nung uh, Our screen. LED screen. Uh, sounded worse than it looked. Buti naman for everyone involved, for both Cholo Ano Nuevo and the LED screen. <laughs> Ryan Sahonia trying to change San Beda's fortune, still as aggressive as he was in the first half, despite this game just taking a turn that they probably didn't foresee happening. FEU not taking it easy, still keeping the pressure on San Beda. Uh, the, the guys are still going very hard. You see their energy hasn't dipped 1%. Alforte on the outside. In and out. That basket's not going to count. And looking at the FEU lineup, it really looks like they've got no plans of bringing Mo Fati back in. I think Fati deserves a rest after what the work that he's done for this game. It really changed the, the look that Sanbeda had earlier. When they started 15-8, Sanbeda got some offensive rebounds and points in the paint. But when Mo Fati came in, started clamping down on the defensive rebounding. That really changed the pace of the game. Alforque threw it up. Still no good. Lina wrestling the rebound away from Devaras. Kalimag to Lina here. And it, it's got to be frustrating if you're Brian Sahonia. You're very familiar with this system that you're playing against, but you're on the other side. It's like you're getting a taste of the medicine that you had a huge dose of for a good year or two. These are, these are guys that he's practiced with and played with and, you know, bled with for the last three or so years. So you want to come out with a great game if you're Brian Sahonia. You want to show your guys how much you've improved away from the old program. So this has not been what probably he would have thought about when he woke up this morning. Different front court here for Coach Denok Miranda. We referred to, or we alluded to Devaras earlier, Buenaventura back in, joining him in the paint alongside Steve. And as Sanbeda sets up their offense, we'd like to thank Frankie's New York Buffalo Wings, the official food sponsor of the 2023 Asia Basket Las Piñas Championship and Smart, the official internet provider of the 2023 Asia Basket Las Piñas Championship. Closing in on the four minute mark here. You see FEU still executing the right way. They're playing defense. You know, they're not just resting now despite the huge lead with four minutes to go. They just haven't finished on those last few possessions as Lina drives and finally makes a basket. A rare basket from Bismarck Lina. Even rarer point in the paint again. And talk, going back to FEU, Stan, you, know, you like, like what you're seeing if you coach Denok Miranda. Your guys are playing it's as if it's a five-point lead only. You're not seeing them going through the motions. And save for those missed shots, they're really doing their best to keep the energy up. And Renzo Competente is rewarded with that jumper. And they're still hustling for those offensive rebounds. And if you're coach Andre, it's very frustrating because despite you know this being a huge lead for FEU, you want the seniors and better guys start to build some good habits for the next few games. Speaking of habits, turning the ball over has unfortunately become a habit for this San Beda Red Lions matcha team squad. And that's uh, that's the byproduct of this FEU defense. It's been high energy, and highly physical at that, to say the least, when it comes to their defense. Buenaventura getting the end one. Another one of the homegrown FEU baby Tamaraos, who is now graduated to the Tamaraos lineup. Oh, that, that FEU Juniors program, as we see that the Bola TV drive of the game, great finish with the left hand by Buenaventura, getting that finger roll to go. 
talking about that FU Juniors program, Stan, that has produced a multiple, a multitude of great players. Talking about guys like Terence Romeo, right? Um, RJ Abarientos came from that program. It's always guys coming in, coming in from the juniors program who don't just come out and help the team. They blossom into stars in the pros. Rich history talaga for that program as Nathan Buenaventura completed that three-point play. They've got a couple of six-foot-six bigs here in Devaras and Buenaventura. And that gives them a height advantage pa rin over San Beda, kahit wala ng FSA. Oh, and, you know, you're looking at Buenaventura. As you said, he's six-foot-six, but he plays like a guard. He takes the ball from the outside. He can go, attack, and both, with, use both hands to attack. You know, FE was really been known, number one, as a guard-centric program. You got great guards, but you always see them with guys like Patrick Sleet, Chola Nuevo, Buenaventura, long, lanky guys who can defend multiple positions. That has been the trademark of FEU basketball. Trevor, you can't forget one Arwin Santos, who many consider probably the greatest FEU Tamarao <laughs> in that mold of the all-around do-it-all forward that you just described. And again, if you're looking at the bench, you know, there's also a bunch of FEU legends there. Namely, number one, of course, Coach Denok Miranda. Number two, there's Coach Mark Easy. You know, guys who have led FEU to titles and trying to do that again as coaches. And you also can't forget the legendary Johnny Abarientos, who's also part of that coaching staff. No that, introductions needed. That's a, that's a starting five I'd love to have for a PBA team. If they were all in their primes, all in their primes that's, a, that's a tough five. But as they are, you could say that it's a murderer's role when it comes to basketball IQ on that FEU coaching staff. I'd, I'd love to be a point guard there and pick the brains of Coach Denok and Coach Johnny A. You know, If you're Royce Alforque, Cyrus Torres, it must be a great time in practice whenever you get to talk to these legends. And it also makes the transition natural if, let's say, you get into your post-playing career, whether that's after college or after a run in the pros. Fun to have those people mentoring you is such a great... Uh, addition to have for your career. 137 remaining here in regulation and FU Tamaras have just about all about wrapped this one up here as they miss that fadeaway jumper. But of course play continues because we are con uh, we are playing with FIBA rules and the quotient might come into play for the FU Tamaras if for some reason, they find themselves in a tie oh, situation yeah. at the end of the preliminaries. Yeah, you never know, so you have to keep playing hard until the final buzzer. So you're going to need every point you can get. We actually found ourselves in this type of situation in Kuala Lumpur, where three teams were in a three-way tie down to the final game of the preliminary stage last April. A lot of interest dies in that game. They were all hoping for certain teams to win by a certain number of points. But again, talking about the depth of FEU, despite not having LJ Gonzalez for the tournament, I see the shot by San Beda. That was a lucky shot because it was tipped in. <laughs> it was tipped in by a San Beda Red Lion. And going back to my point, despite not having LJ Gonzalez in the lineup due to the injury, you've got guys who've stepped up like Patrick Sleet, Cyrus Torres, Troy Salforque. And in this game, you've got Competente and Fati getting the job done as well. Patrick Sleep already with 15 here as we're inside the last half minute of this ball game. Inside, inside the line there, Mundias with a second opportunity. It looks like they're just going to dribble this out for FEU. This is going to be their third straight victory here in Asia Basket. That's three games in three days for FEU sustaining their form. And it probably helps that this is a very young team, a lot of fresh legs. But yes, with this win, the FEU Tamaraos continue to rest comfortably at top group B. 3-0 on the V10. And quite the defensive masterclass from the Tamaraos. You know, if you're a guy who loves defense, this is the game you should have watched. You know, check the replay on YouTube, on Facebook, or on Bola.tv. You're going to love what, you see, what you're going to see from FEU. A lot of superlatives with the way that FEU played, and they're probably positioning themselves to be the EST of their group. <laughs> Once again, the final score, 80-51 to 51 here 
between the FEU Tamaraus and the Sanbeda Red, Lion, Sanbeda Red Lions Macha team. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from this contest. I'm talking about Mo Fati, who really changed the look of the game with his rebounding and his defense. It's been, he was kind of Dikembe Mutombo today, huh? And now, speaking of Mo Fati, he's our best player of the game. Let's send it over to Enros Fernandez. All right, I am joined today by the player of the game, Mohamed Fadi of the FEU Tamaros. Mohamed, your defense was really crucial in today's game. Were you still at the top of your mind while well, in the court? Oh, yeah, sure. Like, whatever I'm doing in the court, it's like uh, the instruction that be, uh, be given by the coach. So, like, he said, like, when I'm there, I need to really show that I'm there. It was like, as you asked me, like, earlier, like, I'm the tallest, so I need to help the team like on the defense, not, not letting the uh, guards penetrating. So trying to force them like to shoot outside, then trying to get the rebound, help my team win. All right. Speaking of your win, you know we always know about the quote, third time's a charm. Do you think that tonight's win was really meant for the team? Yeah, because like uh, we came here like to gain experience because like there is like ex pros, like semi pros and different people coming from like the veterans so we just trying to learn from them then this is the preparation to go to the UAP so that's why we're here all right once again Mohamed Fadi congratulations on your win and of being a player of the game Stan coach Mark thank you very much Enros congratulations again to Mo Fadi five points 12 boards two steals and two blocks a defensive master class as you said coach Mark oh Mo Fadi was the linchpin for this FEU defense. Everything started with him protecting the paint and getting those sort of defensive rebounds. This enabled FEU to get on the break, to get guys like Cholo Anunuevo finishing at the rim, guys like Patrick Sleet, and eventually Cyrus Torres, who found his rhythm in the second half. Cyrus Torres was one of the key players for FEU who had a very cold first quarter, but nakabawi naman for the FEU Tamaraus. And they were able to contain San Beda Red Lions match team even through their numerous attempts at speeding the game up. Now let's send it over to Boaz Mariano from Bola.tv so we can formally wrap this one up. What happens when a lion faces off against the Tamara? We now have the definitive answer. FEU dispatching, making quick and light work of the Sambeda Red Lions. Final score 80 to 51. A 29 point demolition engendered by Mo Fatty and company. Sabay sabay natin silang palakpakan sa ating sarili sarili mga bahay. But if you're joining us here at the Villar College, Coliseum. Say hello to me. Make your presence abundantly known. Felt and heard. Guys, come on, come on, come on. Boaz Mariano, your best laid plan. Your right hand man. Naguulat at naglilingko. www.bola.tv is the place to go. You can also find us on Google Play. Ready for download now for the marquee match. The final match of the evening. Admu against Corsa in just a tiny bit. See you there. Boaz Mariano officially signing off. Thanks.